You ever hear about these scientists and astronomers that were killed or jailed for their crackpot theories to find out centuries later that they were right? Like the case with mathematician turned astronomer Galileo Galilei, where in 1633 he was almost jailed and his books prohibited by the church for heresy. His claim to fame is that the earth is not the center of the universe and revolves around the sun instead of the other way around. But to avoid jail, he agreed not to teach the heresy anymore and spent the rest of his life under house arrest. This is by no means an attack on my flat earthers. I'm just using this piece to make a point in this video. Which came first, the chicken or the egg? Let's take it a step further. Which came first, God or the universe? Ah, a heated topic that's sure to make some people uncomfortable. Here's the funny thing about theories. Even without proof, if you get enough people to believe in it, it becomes fact. But in reality, it is still just a theory. Here's a theory about life and assimilation. The universe is a living quantum computer. Never created, it just is. Always was and always ever will be. The universe scattered itself down to the smallest particle to learn itself, and in doing so created gods within it. Human gods, Draco gods, Nordic gods, gray gods, you get the picture. Some with souls, some without souls. A lot of the times you hear me say we are God as singular instead of plural. It's because we are all the many cells of the singular God and that includes all race of gods. We accepted to come to earth, learn as much as we could till we die, then travel back like gods to the source to deliver our life information and then decide or force to come back and do it all again in another body. Our body upgrades by the Mandela effect are an indication that our bodies are a part of this holographic program and the only thing real is our consciousness. When you enter a new body, you lose all memories because you gain a new blank brain that you have to fill with your new experiences. That's why you should learn as much as you can while you are here because when you die, your memories are the only thing that you take with you. But you do, however, possess two memories when you are born. The memory of your DNA that was handed down by your ancestors that provides you with survival instincts, links to the past, gut feelings and things like that. And there's your soul's memory which is your connection to the physical and spiritual world. It provides you with intuition, insight and love. You ever wonder why you're drawn to certain things you've never done before in your life? Unexplained phobias? Or why you do certain things really well effortlessly? We all have a few of them. One example of mine is farms. I was raised in a city most of my life. My family doesn't have any farming experience. Somehow I like farms, and it gets me excited growing my own food in a garden. That's the memory of my soul from a previous life. Another one, crystals and stones. I have a hard time remembering a lot of things unless I deal with it a lot. But crystals and stones, you tell me the name of them once, and I remember it. I have a bunch of them now, and I remember every one. Why is that? It's all about feelings when it comes to the soul. Getting back to God, there was a time I used to think that these scientists were playing God and doing too much once they achieved the ability of cloning animals. Then after some time, I realized that they are not playing God. They are playing themselves because we are God. If you think about a lot of things we give the biblical God credit for, we as humans have done some of the same things. We can now control the weather, like God. We can make a woman pregnant without a man, like God. We can manipulate and control atoms, like God been time like God and now we achieve the ability to manipulate the collective reality like God. The collective reality is the combined reality of everyone on the planet. Now before all this technology was discovered, if a being came to this planet and performed all the before mentioned, what would we call him or her? A God. Hell, we'll even call a time traveler a God if he didn't tell us he was a time traveler. Men are pushing the limits of what they can do and soon, by accident, we would create another universe if we already have it. This is the universe's way of using us and other gods that have the technology to create more duplicates or simulation of itself, just like cells, because it cannot learn off one life of one person. It has to learn off multiple lives of that one person in multiple universes. So, if man creates a new universe by accident, who is God? But who knows, maybe a new simulation is created every time a child is born and added to the existing parallel universes. Everyone becomes a part of it and that child becomes a part of everyone else's. I know it's getting a little deep. Just hang in there, it's gonna get a little bit deeper. This has been going on so long that there are infinite amounts of duplicate universes from the beginning of time to the end of time. All time exists. And each of them, we, as humans, are making different decisions for everyone. Even though I believe there are parallel universes, I still don't believe we merge or was transferred to any of them. For those that do, answer one question for me. Has your bank account changed? If it hasn't, 
That would mean everyone in this universe made the same exact moves and the same exact decisions as the previous universe. But we know this is not possible because land masses has changed. That right there would cause people to make different decisions. All it takes is one person to change the whole reality. I'll show you what I mean in a minute. But still, I can't understand why some people coming back to life. But I haven't heard a group of people yet say that they thought somebody was alive but had been dead for years. There's no consistency of balance on that. Remember in the coincidence video I keep saying that the universe pre-calculates for every decision you make. It's because there is a universe out there that exists of us making those exact decisions and the outcome has been set. Hence the term there's nothing new under the sun. And if the outcome is not good, the universe leaves little signs for you to make new decisions to prevent you from reliving that same exact life and creating an unbalanced and destructive reality. Not life, reality. Your reality affects the collective reality. The universe leaves markers to get your attention and let you know you need to change your current reality to stay in sync with reality as a whole or risk locking yourself in an unhappy reality that someone else controls. And if you're unhappy, you're liable to cause close ones around you to be unhappy and place them in unhappy realities which affects the whole. So the universe balances itself out by making coincidence happen. Even though the universe gives you signs, it still leaves you the option of making a choice. You ignore the signs, the results of your life is already predetermined and you have to accept your fate. This may even tie into deja vu, but I see nothing wrong with reliving a good life, but even a good life can take a bad turn if reality is not balanced. But there are ways of getting out of locked realities. One way is to make the best out of a bad situation and turn it into your favor, or get out of that situation altogether. Another one is to do something to grab attention. Once you get the attention, you control other people's reality. Attention is the key. Sure, there are kids starving in Africa and in America. But those same kids are doing very well in a parallel universe, and you're somewhere homeless in a parallel universe. You know, that's exactly how those D-Wave computers works. You ask it to solve a problem, it gives you every possible outcome in less than a second, starting with the most efficient one. They make it sound more complicated than what it really is. You know what they're not saying anymore? Quantum computation will be the first technology that allows useful tasks to be performed in collaboration between parallel universes. You want to know how those D-Wave system works based on this statement? You ask it how to achieve a goal. Within a second, it comes back with every possibilities on how to achieve it, starting with the most efficient. It does this by networking with machines in parallel universe and finds the universe where that goal is already achieved and relays that information back to your machine. Why do you think those machines are so expensive? There's no possible way they have even $2 million worth of parts inside of it. It's what the machine can do, it's what you're paying for. It's a quantum computer. The makers themselves admitted that they're not sure how it works, and coming up with solutions a million times faster than PC like they said is not worth 15 million dollars. What can they be asking it that they need an answer so fast? If speed was the case, they'll be using it to mine bitcoins on its downtime. That machine gives the owner the cheat codes to life. I guess they have to make it expensive because if everyone can afford it, it would be worthless. If everybody owns one, it would be too many conflicting realities. Somebody has to lose for others to win. It's called balance. But since I can't prove any of this, this too is just a theory. Here's an example of how it works. You have the machine. Because you keep dating losers and you're always single, you ask it, where can I find the love of my life? In less than a second, the machine finds the universe where you with your most compatible soulmate and relays that information back to your machine. Armed with this information, you find this person and start dating them. And just like that, you move from this reality to this reality. But you don't go alone. Not only did you go to this new reality, but you brought along with you the entire planet and possibly the universe. Because now the universe where you were always dating bums no longer exists to us. Well, it still exists, but not to the collective conscious anymore. We are now in a reality where you are in a happy relationship. All it takes is one person to affect the whole reality. Everyone is important. But I digress. Maybe physical life and the spiritual life works the same way when it comes to climbing the corporate ladder but on two very different scales. Here on earth you take classes or learn a different language to move up in a company. But in the spiritual world you learn to love and be one with nature to move up in the ranks of the enlightened. But while you're here on earth you pick up a hobby or two that you may carry with you onto your next life. Like for example how Prince was able to play 27 different instruments by the age of 20. Who's to say he didn't learn a new instrument or two in each of his life, which made it easy for him to pick it up so quickly and effortlessly? The new skills you pick up today will advance you further in your next life. The reason some people notice the Mandela Effect is because you have been awakened in a previous life and you're more sensitive to the awakening in however form it presents itself. This is a sure sign you're on the path to enlightenment. 
It's taken many lifetimes to get to this point, and it will take many more to get promoted to the next level, whatever that may be. But evil has such a foothold on the planet that it's a gamble now to come back to parents that are encouraged to have you take shots as a baby because they don't know any better and have you mentally lobotomized to keep you asleep. But some of us will always prevail some kind of way and be the soldiers to wake the rest of us. I know I will hear from my Bible and Quran thumpers since they've been flooding my channel lately. Hey, I'm willing to have a logical conversation with you, but if you're just going to throw out verses from your book, I'm just going to ignore you. Those are cop-out responses. What I'm hearing is, I really don't know, but I don't want my beliefs destroyed, so I'm just trying to convince myself. But before you burn me at the stake for hearsay, remember this, it is just a theory. A theory that formed in my head while I was out eating pizza with my wife. Bet it got everyone thinking though. For the rest of us, just love one another, protect the planet, and be patient with those having a hard time grasping the nature of reality. And for the stubborn ones, unless they're your significant other, cut them off. Don't waste your time. Thank you for watching, and thank you for sharing your time with me.